Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The Dragonhold patch has finally hit the live server, and uh, I, for one, am happy to see Scalebreaker go. Now, I am looking forward to this patch, but the new changes have kind of been all over the place, um, just coming through the different PTS iterations. I mean, the first Dragonhold PTS patch notes we went through versus the last are very different things. So, we're going to go through the finalized changes going into the Dragonhold patch, and uh, I'm going to go a little bit quicker than I do normally through these patch notes, and that's just because we've covered a lot of this before. But I did want to do a review of the finalized version of the Dragonhold patch. So, of course, skill respects are going to be set to zero gold for the first week of this patch. Um, and that is due to all the combat changes, which is nice. Alright, so let's get to the bulk of the big changes that we're going to see in combat this patch. Starting off with just the general combat changes. The first big things is that they are making a lot of changes to improve uh, performance this patch. So you guys can read through this yourself if you like. I'm not going to go through it, but... I really am interested to just see on the live server whether performance feels better or not. That's all I'm really interested in. They can put all the stuff they want in the patch notes about what they're doing, but uh, when I see it in game, that's when I will react to it. And here are the big changes to damage over time. They've adjusted them to no longer deal approximately 2.5 times the damage of a traditional spammable, um, but now instead they're going to deal 1.5 times the damage uh, of a traditional spammable in kind of comparison so if you want to think about this as a kind of percent nerf versus live we're looking at a round of 40 percent nerf or so if you think about your tooltips i know that sounds like a lot but because dots were uh buffed insanely in the scale breaker patch honestly it feels a little bit better the dots are a little bit lower than they were during the elsewhere patch but it feels pretty good so we're going to see how this plays out. I have a couple big worries that uh, we might see the tank meta come back, but we'll see how it kind of plays out because the healing power this patch is still really high as well. In general though, snares should be less uh, effective against you just the way that they've reworked them in the sense that they just won't snare you as uh, hard as they would before. Physical and spell resistance on uh, all equipment has been turned into armor, which just grants both, which I really like this change. That way you don't pick between the two. It's just they add armor. And of course, this has been normalized. So if it added 2k physical resist before, it will now add 1k um, physical and spell resist or 1k armor. All right, so let's take a look at the class changes. Starting off with Necromancer. Boneyard had a big cost increase from the Scalebreaker patch to almost 5k uh, base stat, and the damage has been decreased by approximately 20%. Boneyard has gotten the cost increase and the damage decrease um, that we're going to see across all of the dots. Now, these are the AoE dots, so they got a bit of a different treatment from the single target dots. Frozen Colossus, the duration of the major vulnerability is now 8 seconds, but bosses can only be affected for 20 seconds by it. This is just kind of a PvE balance, but for PvP, this is essentially better. Rapid Rot is now 15% increased damage over time, up from 10%. Reusable Parts is now up to 50% uh, bonus cost reduction on your next summon, up from 25%. Shocking Siphon has had a damage decrease by approximately 20%, making it one of the stronger damage over time uh, still in this patch. And then finally, the Skeletal Mage has had the damage decrease per hit by 40%, and that's one of the big damage cuts that we see there. And Disdain Harm has had the uh, increase in damage over time resistance up to 15% from 10%. Now moving on to the Dragon Knight. Combustion no longer has a cooldown. This should just help with Dragon Knight sustain in general. Fiery Breath has also had a base cost increase as an AoE spammable. The Dragon Knight dots, however, are still going to be comparatively better than the other classes' dots. So that's something that I do want you guys to uh, kind of keep in mind about the changes this patch. The damage has been reduced by 20% on it, though. And the Engulfing Flames will now scale off your spell damage and your max mag for the bonus damage. And then the Searing Heat passive has been increased in damage bonus to 33%, and that's to help give DK that uh, superior damage over time ability. Searing Strike has gone up in cost up to 2k. The damage of this ability has been reduced by up to 47%, so a massive cut there. But the Venomous Claw Morph has been increased in the bonus damage by up to 20%. Molten Armaments, this ability and its morphs now grant both Major Brutality and Sorcery at base. This is a normalization that we've seen across all class skills that give you either the Major Brutality or Sorcery buffs. They will now all grant both. 
Igneous Weapon will now last for 42 seconds and has a 36 meter range. Stone Fist has been major reworked into a spammable, now dealing physical damage with 15 meter range. It increased the damage of the base tooltip on this by 66%. The uh, actual damage of Stone Fist is pretty good. It's actually a fairly powerful spammable. This ability will no longer stun outright, but now apply a stack of Stagger, and then after you've applied three stacks, your opponent will be stunned by the next Stone Fist, and this will remove all the stacks of Stagger. The cost on this ability has been reduced to 3,400 to match the spammable kind of costs. The Stone Giant Morph will no longer grant minor resolve, but instead enhances the Stagger mechanic so that affected enemies take 45 extra damage from any attack per a stack. This actually applies to everything, including damage over time. I think that's worth mentioning. Very, very uh, underrated in how strong this could actually be. It could add a lot of potential damage depending on what abilities you're using. And then the Obsidian Shard Morph remains healer focused. They increase the healing power on it as well. And it deals fire damage and heals two friendly targets. Nightblade's Grim Focus now lasts for 40 seconds up from 20. I like that. The minimum travel time of the bow proc has been removed. This is uh, really huge, so this will fire out a lot faster. Big for PvP for this very powerful attack. And now the Relentless Focus Morph will last for 60 seconds instead of 30. Teleport Strike's Minor Vulnerability will now last for 10 seconds. And the Lotus Fan is now going to be decreased in damage by 40% uh, for its damage over time portion. Twisting Path, they increase the damage per tick of this morph by 50%, so actually a buff to this guy here. And then the Summon Shade, they decrease the damage per hit by 31% per hit. Shadow Image will no longer scale with things like Battle Spirit or Propelling Shield. This is kind of a big deal. In PvP, you will notice a decreased range on your Shadow Image. And there's been minor buffs to Dark Shade's damage. And then Veiled Strike, they reduce the cost of this ability to uh, 2,295 Magicka. Cripple has been decreased in damage by 40%. Drain Power will now grant Major Brutality and Sorcery at base, so another normalization. And Power Extraction will now also reduce your opponent's spell damage. And Soul Tether has got a uh, boost. It now heals for half the damage dealt on the initial attack to help give it more healing power. Sorcerer's Bound Armor has been reworked big time. It now puts a 40 second buff on you when you deal damage with a light or heavy attack, you summon a weapon to a maximum of four weapons. Reactivating the ability will cause those weapons to seek out your target and attack them after a short delay, giving Sorcerer its own kind of unique stamina attack ability. It still, of course, retains the increase to the maximum stamina and its uh, light attacks. So big win for Stam Sork there. Daedric Curse, the Daedric Prey Morph, they reduce the bonus damage to pets to 20% down from 40%. The Unstable Familiar's activation ability now costs 4,500 uh, instead of 2,808. They increase the duration of it to 10 seconds though, and the base cost of summoning these abilities is now 3,500. The Clan Fear Morph now scales off the maximum stamina instead of Magicka. They decrease the cost of the special move to uh, 4,500. The AoE now deals the same amount of damage as the light attack, but it hits in a 6 meter radius. So finally adding a strong stamina pet option. And then Winged Twilight has had a massive buff to the healing power. Um, yeah, about 55% from what we see on the Scalebreaker patch. And they increase the damage uh, by 20% on the Twilight's attacks as well. Bolt Escape, you will no longer fatigue if you didn't successfully teleport further than 1 meter. And the ability will now only stun in a 6 meter radius at your final location. Ball of Lightning now lasts for 3 seconds up from 2. It adds 2 seconds of snare in immobilization immunity after teleporting as well. And now Streak creates a cone behind you that causes damage and stuns enemies inside of it and enemies at your end location. Uh, the length is now 17 meters with a 40 degree arc rather than being a 4x15 rectangle. From my playtime with Streak, it is really easy to stun people far away and harder to stun people closer. And then Lightning Splash has had the increase in cost to almost 5k and they reduce the damage of it by about 20%. And Surge will, of course, grant Major Brutality and Sorcery at base now. Templar got some big changes. The range on the Piercing Javelin has been reduced to 22 meters to follow the uh, range of other stuns, but the stun itself will now ignore your opponent's resistances. Puncturing Strikes will now snare the nearest enemy hit by 40% every time it deals damage rather than 70% on the final hit. 
and these abilities are now considered direct damage instead of direct damage damage over time. This is very important for the uh, champion uh, point side of jabs. Spear Shards now last for 10 seconds up from 8. It also costs nearly 5k Magicka and has been reduced in damage by about 30%. Blazing Spear has been increased in initial hit damage by 10%, but the damage over time has been reduced by another 60%. And Luminous Shards is now a little bit cheaper at 4,300 Magicka. Backlash can now critically strike. However, you cannot store damage from someone else's attacks on your Backlash. Only you can uh, add that additional damage to your Backlash now. And the Heal More from Purifying Light will now apply even if your opponent purges off the negative effect. Eclipse, the Living Dark Morph, now only snares for 60% rather than immobilizing your uh, targets. Really, really big change for this skill. And then they reduce the healing on it by approximately 10%. Um, and then one little thing is that they added uh, kind of a golden thing to the visual of it. So it looks different from the Unstable Core, which is also worth noting. Unstable Core, they reduce the initial secondary damage of this ability by 44% and the final hit by 25%, and these attacks now happen in a 5 meter radius around the target. Solar Barrage, they increase the duration of this morph to 8 seconds up from 6, and they decrease the damage by approximately 15%. Sunfire, you will now get Major Prophecy even if you don't deal damage with the ability just from activating it. Increase the duration of this ability to 10 seconds for both morphs. The uh, base cost has been increased to 3k and they decrease the damage over time by approximately 47%. Now, Warden's Betty Netch now gives both the Major Brutality and Sorcery at base. They will also remove one negative effect every five seconds uh, for the duration of the ability. It now lasts for 25 seconds down from 27 seconds, and then you can choose which one you want uh, for a resource restore. Dive has had some big changes. Um, the damage of this ability has been reduced by 10%, and the cost has been increased to 2,700. Now, if you're 7 meters away dealing damage with this will now set your opponent off balance really cool stuff finally offering warden a class stun but they actually got a uh, two class stuns in this patch cutting dive now also applies a bleed for seven seconds um, if your opponent is off balance swarm the cost has been increased to almost 3k this ability will now apply minor vulnerability to your opponent and they've decreased the damage of it by approximately 40 percent the Growing Swarm Morph has been redesigned into a Stamina ability and deals bleed damage. It no longer spreads to nearby enemies upon completion, but instead deals damage to enemies in an area around the initial target. And this will deal roughly half the damage that you're dealing to the initial target. And the vulnerability will only apply to the initial target as well. Winter's Embrace, they have completely redesigned Arctic Winds to deal frost damage in a 6 meter area around you. And this damage now scales with your Max Mag and Spell damage. The Arctic Blast Morph will now stun your opponent if it hits them three times in rapid succession. So there's your second Warden class stun. Crystallized Shield now has a half second internal cooldown on the damage return and the Magicka refund. Impaling Shards, they reduce the cost of this ability and its morphs to 3,240. And they increase the damage of Winter's Revenge by approximately 44%, making it the strongest AoE uh, damage over time field in the game, I think. Piercing Cold, they increase the bonus damage of this passive by 5 and 10%. Sleet Storm, both morphs have gotten some pretty big rework here. The passive Max Mag from Northern Storm is no longer there, but you now get up to 15% bonus Maximum Magicka when you activate the ultimate. And this will last for 30 seconds. And then Permafrost, they decrease the damage on it by approximately 50%. It now will snare your opponent by 70% for every uh, damage that it deals. It will no longer stun the opponent, but it will apply chilled every time. Now moving on to the weapon and guild changes. Starting off in two-handed, Onslaught has had a decrease in the penetration uh, that it gives to 5 seconds instead of 9 seconds after you use it. Carve has had a reduction in the damage over time portion by approximately 40%. The Stampede Morph of Critical Rush it now lasts for 10 seconds, and they reduce the damage per tick by approximately 20%. Uppercut, they reduce the damage of this ability by approximately 16%, and now Dizzy Swing will no longer stun the target and knock them back, but instead set them off balance for 7 seconds. 
And Zenimax even put a note in here letting people know that they can still stun an opponent with a heavy attack if they're off balance. This counts for a partial charged heavy attack as well. Dual wield, they reduce the damage of Flurry by approximately 8%. Twin Slashes, they decrease the damage over time by approximately 50%, and the healing uh, for this morph will now be equal to the coefficient of damage for Blood Craze. Blade Cloak now costs 5k at base, and they reduce the damage by approximately 18%. Um, the Quick Cloak morph is now going to be a lot cheaper at 3,780 stamina. And of course, it now lasts for 10 seconds, up from 8 seconds. Bow, the Poison Arrow, they reduce the damage over time by approximately 15%. The Poison Injection uh, Execute Morph will now apply to the entire skill, so the initial damage and the damage over time for this ability. Scatter Shot, the Draining Shot Morph, will no longer knock back your opponent, but instead reduce their movement speed by 60%. And the base cost of Volley has been increased to 4,500 stamina. Destruction Staff, Destructive Touch, they reduce the damage over time by approximately 50%. And Wall of Elements has had the cost increase to almost 5k Magicka as well. The duration increased to 10 seconds and the damage decreased by about 18%. Soul Magic, Soul Trap, we got some much needed changes. You can now dodge this ability, which is super awesome. And then finally, uh, the damage reduction by about 40%. Leaving this as still one of the strongest dots in the game. Werewolf Infectious Claws, they decrease the damage over time by approximately 40%, but it will now apply the disease status right away. The Claws of Life will now heal you for 100% of the damage caused instead of 50%, just to match the uh, decrease in damage. Werewolf Berserker, they decrease the damage per tick of the bleed applied by approximately 36%. Fighter's Guild Trap Beast, they reduce the damage over time by approximately 50%. And then Entropy, this ability will no longer grant uh, major sorcery. They decrease the damage dealt of all three versions by 40%. The Degeneration Morph will no longer grant Magicka back when hitting an affected damage over time target, but will now grant the Major Sorcery instead. So you choose between the Sustain or the Sorcery buff. And then the Fire Rune, Scowling Rune, they decreased the damage per tick by approximately 36%. And now Trapping Webs will now last for 10 seconds, up from 5. For the Support Cleanse Morph, they reduce the healing per negative effect to uh, 5%. Now we're going to quickly go over the new item sets that they added. The Marauder's Haste giving us a 20% movement speed buff when we cast a damage shield for 9 seconds. That's a massive buff. The Dragon Guard Elite giving us stacks of weapon crit up to a maximum of 5 stacks. So we're going to get about 12% uh, or so weapon crit when we get max stacks on this bad boy. And uh, you can gain 1 stack every 1 second and that's off direct attacks. So an interesting set to uh, give us kind of more stamina DPS option. The Essential Defender set, which is going to give us stacks for dealing damage with non-heavy attacks, up to 10 stacks. And then when we do a fully charged heavy, we restore 533 Magicka and Stamina for each stack that we have on them. And uh, we can apply a stack or gain a stack every one second. So uh, a really interesting heavy armor sustain set. I think it's going to be quite strong, to be honest. And then we've got the new crafted sets. These look absolutely fantastic. The Ancient Dragon Guard, 300 weapon and spell damage when our health is over 50%, 3,460 physical and spell resist when we're below 50%. What an incredible new set. I'm so excited to try this. There is a bit of a quest requirement um, in order to unlock this, but I can't imagine that it's too terribly difficult. And of course, this set is geared towards both Magicka and Stamina builds. We got the Daring Corsair, which is Stamina and Magicka recovery, Weapon and Spell Crit again, and then we reduce the cost of Weapon abilities by 10% Magicka or Stamina, and you gain Minor Heroism for 8 seconds when you use a Weapon ability, and that's on the 8 second cooldown. So it's pretty much 100% uptime on Minor Heroism, plus the cost reduction on your Weapon abilities. I can think of some really cool builds just off the top of my head, Stam Sork, can really use this set well. I think DK could utilize a set like this really well too, even Warden. And then finally, the New Moon Acolyte. This is the one that everybody from the PTS is talking about. 481 weapon and spell damage. Increase the cost of your active abilities by 5%. I don't think that we will see this replacing DPS sets for PvE at all because it is fairly balanced from a numbers perspective. But in PvP, that is such a good burst set to front bar. 481 weapon spell damage, enough said. But my big takeaway from the crafted sets is that they are all geared towards being able to go either for a stamina or magicka and even a hybrid build, which is exactly what I like to see. 
There were some big changes to the three-piece sets in the game. Agility now gives you 206 weapon damage and 1752 max stam up from where it was before. After testing this on the PTS, this is very, very strong to three-piece. Really, really good set. I'm not going to lie. Agility is quite strong now. Um, same with its magic counterpart, Willpower. Blessing of Potentate is now going to reduce the damage you take from players by 5% and reduce the cost of ultimates by 15%. Massive buff to this set. Really strong stuff. Eagle Eye is going to give you uh, almost 10% weapon crit to direct damage ranged abilities. Very cool set for the three piece. The Endurance set will now give us 2k max health and 618 health recovery. What an insane amount of health recovery to get off a three piece. Really, really strong in my opinion. The Grace of the Ancients giving us huge max meg, uh, 1k max meg, 2.4k max meg on the three piece. Uh, the Vengeance Leech set. This one is going to do the same thing that it did before, but it will heal you and restore 2,165 Magicka and Stamina um, instead of the 1505 value from before. Willpower has also been buffed to match Agility, 206 Spell Damage, 1752 Max Mag, really strong new set. And then finally, the Wrath of the Imperium, the Magicka counterpart for that 10% spell crit to your ranged damage abilities. And just a few more item and set changes. Lingering health potions will now only last for the 13 second base up to 17 seconds when you fully upgrade instead of the uh, full 40 seconds that they last now. You can now use potions to give you a unique increase in uh, physical and spell resistance instead of the major resolve or ward buffs. The Blood Moon set, they increased the light attack damage bonus of this set to 55% up from 30%. They reduce the cooldown to 15%, and your light attacks no longer need to be critical hits to generate a stack. Blood Drinker, they increase the damage bonus for the bleeds to 33%. Deadly Strikes, they increase the damage bonus for your damage over time to 20%. Fortified Brass, they reduce the uh, defensive bonus that you get to 3,460 armor instead of the 5k from before. And Grand Rejuvenation will now restore 100 Magicka and Stamina to allies uh, every second for 4 seconds. The Sentinel of Rakugamas, sorry. Um, the Restore on Resource is now 115 Stamina and Magicka instead of 500 Stamina. The Steadfast Hero, they increase the cooldown to 20 seconds on this set. And then Virulent Shot, they reduce the maximum range requirement to 15 meters instead of the 22 meters of maximum range you have. So there you go, guys. Those are all the big combat changes that are coming with the Dragonhold patch. I personally would love to see a few more changes. Um, you know, I know this patch will be better than Scalebreaker. I just know it's going to be more fun than Scalebreaker was, but I would still love to see the cast times and stuff come off ultimates and uh, the way that uh, undodgeable, unblockable skills in the game just get reapproached a little bit. But that's still my own personal gripe. I would love to hear what you guys think about this new patch. I am looking forward to it. I can't wait to upload some footage for you guys, so look forward to that coming this week. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you guys are new here, hit that subscribe button. I create daily ESO content, so be sure to stick around for more. I feature builds as well as top five PvP battles, so if you guys have clips you want to send in, or a build you want to send in, you can send it to ChristopherESO at Hotmail.com. More information in the description below. We are sponsored by What The Fast. They're a VPN for gamers. They give me better ping to my favorite games, and they're free to try for the first 30 days. No credit card to sign up, so give it a shot if you guys want. And then last but not least, if you guys really love the show and you want to help support it, you can always become a patron on Patreon. Without your help, I wouldn't be able to do this job, so thank you to everybody who decided to help out. Thank you to everybody who decided to just tune in and watch today i hope that you guys enjoyed the video and i hope to see you guys next time have a great night everybody